Let's get back to our top story this hour. We have new insight into President Obama's use of drone strikes against American citizens and defenders of civil liberties are sounding the alarm. They believe it's way too easy for suspected American terrorists overseas to land on the president's kill list. It's a time for a debate here in the Situation Room. We're joined by two guests. Cliff May is the president of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Congressman Keith Ellison is a Democrat of Minnesota. Gentlemen, thanks to both of you for coming in. Thank uh, you. And let me read uh, from this Justice Department memo that was leaked. Uh, th this is uh, out there. The condition that an operational leader present an imminent threat of violent attack against the United States does not require the United States to have clear evidence that a specific attack on U.S. persons and interests will take place in the immediate future. Is that okay with you? You know, it, it really bends the definition of what imminent actually means. I do agree with the use of the word imminent, but I think imminent means close proximity in time to the attack and that uh, the person uh, has, has some real meaningful planning uh, behind what but is it okay for the United States to kill U.S. citizens without any judicial procedure whatsoever? That's very concerning to me. Uh, I think in a, in a situation where an American citizen is posing an immediate threat to national security, is going to kill Americans right away. I think that it is it is lawful and it is uh, sound to to take action to protect to American kill lives. Them. To take a measure in it, to take to take uh, uh, measures to protect American lives, up into including deadly force, but what but what I mean is close proximity, real planning, not uh, you know some sort of a highly attenuated thing, and so I think that we've got to tighten it up much more than it's been laid out in this memo that I read. What do you think, Clint? I mean, the congressman says it needs to be tightened up. The, the kind of vague use of what imminent is now, it goes too far. I mean, where are the boundaries? Well, the, look, the, the language that we've seen so far is a little bit vague. There are legal memos that were written by the Justice Department on this kind of killing, just as there were legal memos written under the Bush administration about the use of torture or, and what constitutes torture and doesn't. I think it's justifiable for members of Congress, at least some of them, to say we want to see these, this judicial reasoning. We want to see what the Justice Department's come up with and review it ourselves. I think it's important. Two things are important. One is, I think we do need to use drones uh, in this war. I think if an American is a member of Al-Qaeda and that is clearly established and he's hiding someplace like Yemen, you get to use a drone against him. Well, I think let's, you have let's to be have... specific. Okay. I know you supported the killing of Anwar al a U.S. Exactly. citizen. There were other U.S. citizens that were killed. Do you support the killing of U.S. citizens the way the U.S. killed, for example, Anwar al Awlaki? Should he have been targeted for assassination? Well, first of all, let's establish that Anwar al Awlaki is a despicable human being. Should he have been and targeted know, for assassination? I just want to be clear where I am on yeah. him to begin with. But, I, but it raises real questions for me. As I already mentioned a moment ago, if he was imminently about to commit an act of terror against Americans, I think, and I think that it would it would be justifiable. But if it was an attenuated thing, if they he could have he was inspiring well, Americans, if they he could, was inspiring people to kill Americans, but he wasn't yeah. exactly out there killing Americans himself. I he was on websites doing it. If they could have feasibly arrested Anwar al Awlaki, they should have done so. They couldn't. Well, well, how do we know that? I mean, the reality is they knew where he was. They knew where to attack him. Now, again, I'm not going to second guess the Anwar al case because I don't know all the facts there. But I will say, if they could have feasibly done it, and if he was not imminently about to go kill Americans, I got real concerns. Two points. One, due process is only the process that is due. The process that is due is not necessarily a judicial process. That's what Eric Holder said, and I think he's quite right. Anwar al is out planning and plotting terrorist acts and helping to facilitate terrorist acts. I think it's okay to strike him. And I don't think you have to wait till it's one minute before he's about to launch an attack or set somebody off. One I, or, well, the, the, your question is, and you're right on this, Congressman, what does imminent mean and how do you define it? And it's kind of loosey-goosey here. The other th question is, and you raise this quite rightly, is what does it mean to be unfeasible to capture him? Unfeasible. Does that mean difficult? Does that mean inconvenient? We have a president now who doesn't want to capture somebody and put them in Guantanamo. Would he rather kill them? If he would rather kill them but could capture them but doesn't want to put them in Guantanamo, that doesn't seem to be unfeasible, and that's, and that is a little bit problematic. So one thing we should do, and I think you should do, and other members of Congress, you have a different kind of war. We may need different kinds of laws. We haven't been creating them. This is neither a criminal justice case. Nor is it the kind of war we had in World War II where you could kill somebody on the battlefield without getting a subpoena or a lawyer's and judge's permission. We probably need some different rules and regulations, oversight, 
but not a veto power. No, and I'm going to tell you, I do think we are in a different set of circumstances, but I don't think that we should ever as America say we don't believe in due process anymore, that we don't believe in basic standards of justice, and we don't believe in trials. I think trials work. And as a matter of fact, we tried a lot of terrorists in, in, in regular old federal district courts in the United States, uh, and I think that our here's courts the, here's stand the argument, Congressman, that a lot of Republicans are saying if George W. Bush were targeting American citizens without any due process, you on the left would be outraged, but you're trying to protect the president who's doing it. Well, to the well as, you know, the terror memo. as you know, I just wrote, I wrote an op-ed. When I say you, critical. I mean those on right. the right. You know, but but I but I guess this is an occasion where yes, I'm a supporter of uh, Barack Obama, but that, but that does not mean that I'm not willing to call into question this policy, and I have, and I will continue to do so. To the president's credit, though, he has said he needs Congress to have input on this and to help set up a legal architecture, which I don't think we have. I, and, and I worry about the, you know, the flip side. Look, we're not always going to be able to monopolize weaponized drones. Other countries you are going to get this inviting. stuff. Well, yeah. And so why not? Why don't we lead? Why don't we lead justly? Because one point we're going to need international protocols on how to use this technology. And we are going to wish that we had taken the lead and said, what are we going to, how do we do a this? A quick thing yes right or right? no for both of you. Cliff, first to you. Adam Gadan, the propagandist from California who's working in a, inspiring Al Qaeda operatives out there. Should the U.S. kill him? Under the law, as it's now written, as we understand it, President Obama would be justified to do that. He's an al-Qaeda commander involved in terrorism. I think that would be justified. If a President Obama took that decision upon reflection, I think I would support what that do you decision. Think, Congressman? I, I'm very disturbed about uh, that kind of action. But again, you know, the, you, these things are fact-bound. They're uniquely uh, suited to the factual situation. But I would be very concerned about killing a U.S. citizen with, that was not immediately about to commit an act of terrorism. Good discussion. Guys, Thank thanks you. very Thank much you, for coming in. This debate is not going away. As no, 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 you know.